let's explain how to determine what age you can expect to live to. We don't know exactly what the future holds, but we can make scientifically founded assumptions and calculations to estimate how long a baby born today will live. When individuals' dates of birth and death are recorded in a national civil register, we can calculate the lifespans of people in that generation. And from that, we can deduce the average lifespan or life expectancy for that generation. But those calculations can only be done after all generation members have died. So how can we know the answer for your generation, since you're still alive? That's where the notion of life expectancy at birth comes in. First, demographers use civil register data to calculate a mortality rate at each age. That is, the proportion of people who died at each age during the year under study. Using those rates, they can estimate the probability of survival for all children born that year. For example, if they find that 10% of 90-year-olds die in that year of their lives, they can assume that when people born that year reach the age of 90, they too will have a 10% risk of passing away in that year of their lives. Demographers can then work on the basis of a fictional generation of 100,000 births and make the following calculation. If a person in that generation has a 5 per 1,000 risk of dying before their first birthday, then there will be 500 deaths of children under age 1. They then take the remaining figure of 99,500 survivors, 100,000 minus 500, and apply the risk of dying between ages 1 and 2 to it, proceeding in the same way for each year of life. Life expectancy at birth is therefore the average age at death of this fictional generation of 100,000 persons, subjected throughout their lives to the mortality observed in the year they were born. The same calculation can be applied at any year of life, age x, to estimate the average number of remaining years given mortality by age for the year in question. How life expectancy has evolved over history Life expectancy began to rise in developed countries during the 19th century as child mortality fell thanks to advances in hygiene and nutrition. It then rose further due to medical advances, particularly the discovery of vaccines and means for combating infections. In developed countries today, most usually live beyond age 80 and most often die of cancer or cardiovascular disease. Future progress in life expectancy will depend heavily on the battle against these illnesses. In less developed countries, there is still much progress to be made in reducing child mortality. If mortality continues to fall at the same rate as in the past, life expectancy in France, which stands at 83 years in 2020, could rise to 91 by 2050 and 95 by 2100. Today, demographers do not know how mortality evolves for people of very advanced ages or how it will evolve in the future, but they have developed several longevity increase scenarios. The first is that the risk of dying will diminish at the same pace at each age and that highest age at death will continue to rise. The second is that deaths in the future could be concentrated around a single age. The third combines the first two, resulting in the hypothesis that all deaths will be delayed to higher ages, but younger age dying at will be delayed faster. Deaths will therefore be increasingly concentrated at extreme ages and occur at increasingly late ages. From generation to generation, research on this question is advancing and demographers are helping us attain a clearer picture of the future.